Thank you, Pete. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's a beautiful day in Blacksburg. It's good to have you here. And we especially want to welcome Coach Chef, his wife, Barbara, and their children, Anna, John Michael, and Sam, to the Hokie family. So we're proud to have you all here. Thanks a lot. Uh, we're also proud to have you serve as the next Hokies head coach. Um, and I believe you and your family coach will find Virginia Tech and all of the New River Valley and community to be really special. And we're really proud to have you all as a part of that. Before we look ahead with anticipation and excitement to the future of Virginia Tech baseball, I just want to make sure I pause for a minute and honor the past a little bit as well. And I certainly want to start off or, or early on um, recognize the effort of Pat Mason. He was here for seven years as a head coach and an assistant. He was a wonderful Hokie and did it the right way, and uh, we're wishing he and his family the best. And Coach Mason certainly played an integral role of our vision for what is now uh, or soon will be completed uh, Union Park at English Field. I also want to thank our student athletes, our players, uh, for the effort they put forth this season. And we talk about athletics teaching life lessons, and certainly in life you have change and adversity that comes at you, and I think they've handled it very well and competed very hard. Their grades were excellent so on and so forth. I also want to thank Kevin Anderson. He's the athletic director at Maryland. If you don't know that, those are not fun calls to make to somebody that you like and respect. But Kevin was first class and uh, handled it um, very professionally. And I thank him for enabling us to, to get to Coach Chef. I also want to thank our folks from Union Bank that are here. Thanks for joining our vision. Um, I don't doubt we could do it in the ballpark that we had, but I know we can. And the one that your investment and partnership and community involvement played a role in. I want to thank John Boleyn, um, who helped me a lot on the search and behind the scenes. He gets a lot of things done. Uh, he's our day-to-day -day, uh, sport oversight for baseball, and he always likes to be behind the scenes. I know he doesn't like to be recognized, so that's exactly why I'm doing it. <laughs> I also want to thank my boss, of course, President Sands, our Board of Visitors, uh, Dwight Shelton, our CFO, for believing in our vision and uh, having faith in what we're doing here, and many other of our staff members behind the scenes in this process. They help tremendously. When we were first looking uh, at this hire, oh, and welcome Coach Hartman. My goodness, it's great to have you here. Thank you. That's a guy who knows how to do it and win ball games right there. We're glad to have you. When we first sat down and we started talking about who is the next coach going to be, one thing that we like to do, certainly names come at you, but where we like to start is what are the traits we want our next head coach to have. Um, that's where we start. Forget the names. What do we really want them to be about? And that's what we use to guide us through the process. And through talking to people here, through talking to our current team, uh, we really put together around 10 traits. We didn't start off with 10, but it's a nice round number. And this is what we started off with. Um, and I think you'll see very soon the reason we're honored to have Coach Chef be our next head coach. We, in no particular order, the 10 were we wanted our next head coach to have ACC or State of Virginia roots, ideally. We wanted them to have the ability to succeed at the Power Five level and compete at the elite level of college baseball, and that's what the ACC is. We wanted our coach to be able to successfully recruit the Mid-Atlantic and the East Coach, East Coast, excuse me. We wanted our next coach to be excellent at player evaluation, but also developing talent. We were looking for a coach that brings them in at 18, and they're better at 19, 20, and 21, and that's always the sign of a good coach. <coughs> Number five was we wanted our coach to show humility and to represent the brand and fabric of Virginia Tech in this community. However, we also wanted them, number six, to be one heck of a competitor. And I heard this is an often used phrase, but we like the phrase, stay humble and stay hungry. If you're combining humility and competitor, we feel that's that. Number seven uh, was we wanted a coach that generally cares about his players and the student athlete experience. The eighth, and again, these are in no particular order, they're all equally important. We wanted a coach with a clean NCAA record, with an academic commitment, and to, is the total package off the field as well as on the field. We wanted a coach that had that fire in his belly, so to speak, and the energy and passion to grow our culture and take us to the top of the ACC. To have that perseverance and grit, and to develop us initially as first and foremost a challenger brand, and then once we get to that level, we're going to develop into a championship brand. And I'm confident we have the, the gentlemen to do that. And number 10, you may have lost count there, but number 10 was we wanted a coach that would help us continue our momentum. On campus right now, what we've got is an athletic department. It is rolling along really well. And we used this analogy when we were talking about it. If we're rolling down the interstate as an athletic department, we want a coach to come in, merge right along, and help us go faster. And that momentum is palp palp 
if I can't say the word, I shouldn't use it. You can feel it. <laughs> and on this campus and in this department, uh, that was what we also wanted to coach to fit and to do that and take us onward and upward. So Coach Chef certainly checks all 10 of those boxes and then some. His name came up very early in the process, right? Once we started with traits and we started doing our homework behind the scenes, it came up early and often, and it kept coming up. And we talked to a number of coaches. We talked to scouts. We talked to some head coaches that are currently in the College World Series. We talked to some coaches that were formerly in the College World Series. Um, we talked to even uh, head of umpires, uh, crews, other things. And time and time again, it came back and it checked all the right boxes, and we were convinced he was the right guy. We certainly liked his track record and resume, obviously. Virginia Tech is an easy place to recruit coaching talent to, talent that fits and stands for what we stand for. And we'll succeed here at Virginia Tech at a championship level, academically, socially, and athletically with that formula. I know that. We appreciate Coach and his family's willingness to, to uproot and move here. I know that's never easy, but it's a package deal, and we really appreciate y'all jumping in with us and leaving a really nice opportunity and coming down to Blacksburg and Virginia Tech. So together, all of us, all of you, we're going to make Blacksburg a baseball town. It has been before, and it will be again. And we want to be in the NSA tournament, certainly, but we have the right coach, and we're going to give him time to build it the right way, to build a program, not a quick fix, but again, one that's going to be a challenger brand first and a champion brand later. We will have a program and a stadium that our fans and community will love. We're soon going to have a tremendous home field advantage that will per personify that Hokies respect, one that is intimidating to opponents in the right way, and in a good way, uh, Union Park at English Field will soon become known as one really tough place to come to, into and win. I can't wait for that. The new era of Virginia Tech baseball starts today, and please join me in welcoming our new and next head coach, Coach John Sheff. All right, we got to do like the major league draft here. <laughs> we got to stand up front for a picture here. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, when I was when I was um, trying to figure out what was the best way to start this, because as you can imagine, um, you know, you work for an awful long time for a day like today, and um, it kind of just hit me actually as I got in the elevator and I got with Wit this morning, and it's kind of a funny story. But as I was preparing to come down here, and you know, you, baseball coaches don't wear these kind of clothes every day, but every once in a while for for big occasions, so. I, I didn't have a maroon tie. So I had to go out to visit my friends at Joseph A. Bank to see if I could get a maroon tie. And about, it took me about 10 minutes before I bought a $41 tie. <laughs> I haven't spent $41 on a tie in my life, right? But I got the tie I was looking for. So I get in the elevator wherever I was, and, and those guys said to me, boy, I, I, bet, I, bet, you didn't, uh, I bet you didn't have this tie. In your, in your arsenal, it's a Virginia Tech tie, right? So I said, no, I didn't. But I, I'll, someday I'll tell you where I got it from. So when I got here two days ago, I checked in at that incredible hotel on campus, and the guy behind the desk was wearing this tie. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, you know, I said to myself, yeah, should I ask this guy this question or not? And I said, I'm just going to do it because I've learned over the years, if you want something, you, you, you go get it. I said, how much you want for that tie? <laughs> and he said, you want my tie? I said, well, I, I'm, it's kind of a big thing I got to do on Thursday, you know, and I don't have a tie that has those colors. I got one of the colors, but not two. He said, I'll give you the tie. So uh, my family checks in the day after, and he brings a tie up to the room, and lo and behold, here it is. All right. So anyway, we're good. And that's kind of a long-winded story there, but uh, what a privilege and an honor, okay, it is for, to stand before you folks as Virginia Tech's head baseball coach. Um, as Wood had said, uh, as an opponent in the past, my first two years at Maryland, we were in the ACC. And so I visited here as an, as an opponent, as, as a head coach from an opposing team. And in those visits, it, you know, I had the opportunity to, uh, to observe 
Virginia Tech Athletics and the passionate fan base and the championship culture clearly, you know, always stood out to me. And it also intrigued me, and I've followed it um, over the last X amount of years since those visits. When you step foot on this campus, it doesn't take very long to realize how committed the administration is, um, the athletic department is to, to being competitive and winning at a very high level. Uh, Virginia Tech's also been um, very committed, obviously, over the years to developing student athletes on and off the field as, as I've done my research, as you folks know. Those things are real important to me. Uh, one of the first things I did when I got to Maryland, you know, the APR wasn't very good in the baseball program at the time, so I had to create an academic culture there. And that was one of the cultures we created there, the academics first and then all the things that surrounded our baseball program. So that's one of, one of the things I intend to do there. Uh, here, I'm sorry. Um, I know Wood had introduced my family, but I just want to take two seconds. Uh, me and Barb have been married for 20 years. Um, and this profession is a tough one because it's always dragging you away. The recruiting aspect, the traveling aspect, always, it always drags you away from your family. And, you know, I, I, I really have never gotten an opportunity to kind of publicly thank her for which how she raises these three kids here. So I know she doesn't want me to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. So. <laughs> um, Anna's 11, John Michael's 10, Sam's 8. They're all pretty juiced to be here. Uh, if nothing else, they love the, uh, all the gear that was thrown their way last night. <laughs> they, were, they were running around town with it on, so it was really cool. So, uh, From an administrative standpoint, obviously I want to thank President Sands and Witt and the Board of Trustees for this great opportunity. Uh, obviously, Witt's reputation as an AD it kind of speaks for itself. I don't have to. You all know that, and I'm not going to go into that. But I would say that, that um, number one, it's, it's having read about what's been going on here since he came as far as the trend upward and, and uh, the successful uh, one coach after another, after another, after another. And you're like, man, that's, you know, from an outsider looking in, you're saying to yourself, that's something pretty special there. And then, and then to be contacted by him and then obviously to be given this opportunity kind of, you know, puts on my shoulders, you know, it, it's a great feeling to be included, I guess, in that group, and, and I'm very, very appreciative of that. Uh, as our conversations went, um, it got me more and more excited about the prospect of working with him and building a championship baseball culture in this, in this great town. So I certainly appreciate you and, and the opportunity that, that you've afforded me here. Uh, quickly, I just wanted to thank the place I just came from, the Maryland players, the assistant coaches, the support staff, uh, we, we had some pretty good days and, and accomplished some pretty good things over the last five years. Uh, those guys bought into our vision. They came to work every day. We created a good working environment, which will be the same thing here, positive working environment for our guys. And uh, I try to create an environment where, where I don't micromanage people and where it's an easy working environment where the standards are set high and, and the expectations are there. And I let guys do their thing. I let the coaches coach and the players play. and, and Obviously, we're, we're pretty big into our preparation and instruction, but I try to let pe you know, people do their jobs. But I always appreciate what those guys did for me personally there. Obviously, Kevin Anderson, Damon Evans, for kind of what they did for me and my family over the last five years, and I think that program's in a good place as I leave. As far as my vision here for, for uh, Virginia Tech baseball, um, we'll work real hard you know, as a staff to put our players in the right position, whether it's on the field, whether it's off the field, academically to put them in the best position they, they can be in to be successful. Uh, two of the things I really talk regularly about with our guys are preparation and taking care of the small detailed little things. I think college baseball is a sport that's made up of one small thing after another. Whether it's how you wear your uniform or how you put a bunt down or, or what kind of teammate you are or how you dress when you go to class or how you visit with your professors um, and develop a relationship with them. And so it's one little thing a a after another, and it's one day of preparation after another, and it's setting a pretty high standard and not looking too far down the road. It's, it's worrying about Tuesday when you're on Tuesday, and we'll worry, about, we'll worry about tomorrow when we get there. But let's worry about what we have to do today to get better today. One thing I've always tried to do is, is stand behind our guys, our players, our coaches, um, and, and, and kind of fight for them 
and know that and have them know that I have their backs. And I've in a lot of the, many of the conversations I've had with the current returning Virginia Tech players and the new incoming ones, that's been a constant part of that conversation so that they kind of know where I'm stand, where I'm coming from. I think it's important that the players know that that the coaches are behind them no matter what sport uh, we're talking about here and, and particularly that the head coach kind of has their back through the ups and the downs because as you all know I'm sure we've had a lot of we have current athletes and a lot of former athletes in here and and you need to know that whatever the coach and staff is doing that through ups and the downs that, that they're going to have your back. From a timing perspective I mean clearly this is a really incredible time to be part of, of this baseball program. Uh, we, we compete in the, the, the top baseball conference in the country. That's something that I, I, mean, I don't shy away from that. I mean, it's something I embrace. I, I really enjoyed my time in the ACC in 2013 and 14. The competition's tremendous. Um, the relationships, the other coaches in the league treated me very well as a new coach in the league at the time. So I really felt like I, 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 it, it, was, it was a good situation for me and for, our, for the program I was at at the time. And I really look forward to getting back in that. Um, obviously, w with what this place is doing from a facility standpoint and the commitment that you folks have made to it is, I mean, any coach in America, when you l listen to that, when you learn about it, when you see it, 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 it immediately just grabs your, your interest and your intrigue. And you say, man, you know, where is this going? Like, you know, what, what could I do with this? And that, that grabbed me from, from the get go. And, and certainly that grabbed me a long time ago, actually. And then obviously when I was fortunate enough to get a phone call from, from Witt, it was even more so. Um, when you look at one of the things I constantly talk about in recruiting is value. Like what can a place offer a recruit from a value standpoint? And when you look at Virginia Tech and specifically Virginia Tech baseball and you put the word value on the program and you look at the academics, the campus, the location, the conference, the facilities, the administration being behind it, a new coaching staff, the value that we can put in front of a recruit is completely unarguable. I mean, it's, it's checking one box after another. And I think any, anyone that knows anything about college baseball on a high level, when you, when you evaluate those check boxes of value, uh, I don't think any recruit that will be after can just look away when you evaluate all that value, in my opinion. Uh, as far as our current team goes, I've tried to contact just about every single player. Uh, there's just a few that I haven't spoken with yet. I'd say about 90 to 95 percent of my have for the guys I haven't. That'll come. The, that'll happen in the coming days. The conversations I've had with them have been tremendous. Uh, they seem like they're very um, intrigued and very. Um, uh, they, they, want, they, they, they basically want to get back here and get things rolling. And, and my, the, the staff that I'll assemble really looks forward to them coming back to Blacksburg and kind of getting the whole thing in motion. Speaking of that staff, uh, I look forward to putting one together. That's going to be, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of putting one together. That'll be very excited for this challenge. Uh, there'll be positive, non-ego guys that are teachers, developers, very um, ton of energy, a lot of en high energy guys, guys that understand our recruiting footprint, specifically in Virginia, um, and, and guys that, that um, that, that are going to be willing to go out and do what we have to do to get this thing as good as possible, as quick as possible. Um, speaking of recruiting, where I'll start there is this is Virginia Tech, and we want to build it right with Virginia players first. Uh, one of the things that we established when I first got to Maryland was that we wanted to, we wanted to grab a hold on that state first and then work our way out. And I know we have great competition in the state. I, I know that full well. But I also know that with what we have, the value that we have to offer recruits, that we'll be in the forefront of the best players in this state. And from neighboring states, we have great relationships in, in some of the neighboring states. And some of, our, some of the best relationships I have in recruiting are in, are in states like Pennsylvania and New Jersey and New York, where I'm from, and Pennsylvania, where my wife's from. So uh, there's a lot of really good baseball in the Mid-Atlantic region, as most of you know and specifically in this state, and they'll all be attacked on a regular basis. Um, I encourage, you know, recruits to, to do their homework on, 
on our, our staff when it's announced and, and, and me as well. And I think what they'll see is high energy, blue collar coaches um, that are very active, that, are, that have a proven track record uh, in the regular season, in the postseason, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, and then obviously I think once we show guys the value that's here, uh, I'd like to think that's going to put us in a good position. Uh, the last thing I'll bring up is this. You know, as a former outsider looking in and now as an insider, uh, one of the first things you look at as a coach is commitment. And clearly there's an awful lot of commitment here based off of the things I already said. But the, the last thing I will tell you is that for me, commitment is being able to stand here and look at this. Because it's not typical that you see this at a baseball introduction. You know, normally would see this at a football or a basketball introduction. So to be able to see this at a baseball introduction screams commitment, you know, to me. And, and it also, you know, I think tells me and, and our family that we're certainly in the right place. And then when you couple it with everything that's going on, on outside this building, it just gives you an awful lot of uh, good feelings to kind of get this thing moving and get it where, where you folks want it to be. So I really thank everyone for coming out and, and um, supporting it and, and welcoming uh, myself and my family. Uh, this is a great day really for us as, as, uh, as baseball people and as a baseball family. And we look forward to really getting it going. And I'll coin the phrase now that we're going to build it in Blacksburg. And, and that will be something that we talk about with our players in, in general. And I'm really looking forward to building it in Blacksburg. And thanks for coming. I appreciate it.